Hey, Vato. Welcome back. You're here on my B channel. Where at the end of the day, we smoke some goddamn weed. And react to horrible things. Scary things. I got that purple kush from BC, Al. I showed it, y'all. I showed it to y'all yesterday. Shit, man. It's been a long day. Done a lot of recording. And we got three disturbing, true horror stories. Let's get it. Subscribe. Wait, since she was a child, as long as I can remember, no one would call Nancy fat. But there is just a type God of damn, this with guy's a voice and... narrow waist, which makes the hips seem wide in contrast. Well, Nancy's breasts were also impressive. The poor girl was terribly complex. Somehow she managed to pick up a very thin friends with whom what she constantly fuck? compared herself, exacerbating her suffering. Okay. Nancy is my friend's younger sister, and we often saw each other at my friend's house. In April, Nancy this guy's began voice to simply is so melt intense. in front of my eyes. No, diet would help her melt in front of her eyes like what lose weight so quickly at the end of may i remember it was 36 kilograms instead of the previous 55 well what into june the 36 kilograms the parents were panicking and looking for yo 36 times 2.2 because that's how you get pounds that's 72 Yo, that is fucking late. Some disease in their daughter and drugs in the room. A friend was sure that Nancy had secretly bought some harmful pills. But they better be pills. Nancy had long been fond of mysticism and read somewhere that when you put a spell on death with the help of a wax doll and the grave of the namesake, the victim before death as if shrivels up loses weight and dies. what the fuck eyes of exhaustion nancy reasoned that she was not a real witch so the ritual would not work to the end she would lose weight but she would not die i don't need to explain what this 16 year old wonder did next at first nancy was happy she became the skinniest girl in her company. And the fact that guys stopped paying attention to her, what difference does it make? But now, she is a thin beauty. And for a long time, the girl did not worry at all. And this is unsettling. She came to me when she began to dream about her long dead aunt and great grandmother. They were calling her with them, and very persistently dragging her by the hands and Nancy woke up from her own screams I began to diagnose her with the help of tarot you can't diagnose someone with the help of tarot that's not psychiatry the result was fantastic the first time I pulled out death the tower and the ten of swords I realized that it was bad but to comfort Nancy I mixed the deck and pulled out the cards again the same three cards, only oh, in a different fuck. order. I'd you never fucked. encountered anything You're like this before. At that point, Nancy you boned, didn't feel the need to tell me about her experiments with graves and dolls. That's why I did the calculations for a long time, puzzling over the deciphering. According to the cards, it turned out that the spoilage was inflicted by a very close person to Nancy. He did it on purpose. What spoilage? But not with malice. Some kind of good purpose. In any case, my competence to remove such a thing was clearly no longer enough. So I took. I feel Nancy like this was switch. written by a North Korean I mean, AI. She herself dabbles in spoils and removes them very well. All Spells the negativity in such the a fuck? removal is given in an increased volume to us. After the ritual, Nancy was hospitalized. When her friend visited her in the hospital, her sister asked her to tell me and Olivia, that witch, 
that she had done a spoil on herself to lose it, weight. I think they mean a spell. She told this is a North Korean AI. Spoil. A Olivia's spoil. competence was not enough here. Another witch, a healer, was involved. The case seemed to get better, although Nancy had not been discharged yet. Probably the biggest fear in little... Okay, that was definitely written by a North Korean AI. That is my reaction to that. What the hell? Alice's life was waking up at night and seeing that she was not alone in the room. For the second night in a row, she woke up and saw someone standing at the window. An unfamiliar silhouette, each time staring off into the distance. Of course, Alice was afraid to ask the stranger who he was and how he was here. Instead, it was Al Gore. She hid under the blanket and cried until morning came. From For environmentalism? Days, Alice <laughs> thought about her mom. She tried to imagine what she looked like, how old she was now, where she was, and why had she left her. Alice wanted to meet her mom very much because only to her she could tell about those nightmares that are going on in her room. And so the night came again. Another sleepless night. Alice tried to stay awake. She bit her hands, pinched herself, and walked in circles around the room. Alice looked at what the a clock weirdo. at five in the morning. Apparently this night will not happen. Anything terrible, thought the girl. This night will not happen anything terrible, man. This North Korean AI English really spoils these spooky stories, but it kind of makes it funny anyway. Please smash subscribe, hit like, drop me a comment, man. Who do you think wrote this? Think these are true stories? Change. But then everything went wrong. Something hissed under the bed, and there was a scraping sound outside the window, as if someone was scratching the glass with long claws. Oh, shit. The room became very cold and dark, even darker than at night. Alice heard voices, thousands of voices. Oh, now she hearing something. voices? Damn. Merging in unison. They got louder and louder. Alice tried to cover her ears with her hands, but someone behind her grabbed her hands tightly. The girl tried to scream, but couldn't. Her mouth was covered by a black palm, and suddenly everything stopped. The voices fell silent. The iron embrace disappeared. The girl fell to the floor. Damn. When she found the strength to get up, she saw a shadow in front of her, taller than the small cabinet in which Alice hid her toys. The shadow headed sharply towards Alice. Something grabbed the girl and lifted her to the very ceiling. Her arms and legs spread apart as if something wanted to rip Alice apart. Lacerations began to appear on her shoulders and legs. Blood dripped onto the floor. Everything stopped and the girl fell. She managed to get up and ran to her door. She pounded with her little fists, hoping someone what would hear the hell, her man? and come to help. It's it like it shifted happen. from North Korean AI yeah, writing to regular. All the doors were locked tightly at night. There was that shadow again. It was no longer a shapeless mass, but a black man. He flew to the window. A black began man? began to look out intently at something. Stop it, please. I'm hurt and scared. With tears in her eyes mumbled Alice. The shadow, as it seemed to Alice, looked at her and shook its head negatively with a strong twist in the air the shadow flew under alice's crib and disappeared someone had heard alice after all the girl heard a key being inserted into the keyhole the door almost opened but it was too late a black hand came out from under the bed and dragged alice under the what? bed None of the orphanage staff was surprised at the disappearance of the little orphan. Damn. Because they all knew that it was easier to give up small children than to die themselves. 
Cheers. Cheers. When I was 18, I was lucky enough to move out of my... Man, fuck that orchid staff. All the news stories are real. That's another reaction. And the stunning commentary provided you by yours true, Tony Buck, Ebo, Zombie Slayer, Herb Kush Smoker, Extraordinaire. About to throw that shit in the air. Hey! Cheers. My parents' house in a neighboring town into an old two-room apartment. I didn't pay much attention to the fact that one of the previous owners of the apartment died in it. Oh, shit. It happens. A little later, I was really scared because I found out that he died right on that sofa, which I inherited, and on which I slept until the fact came to light. By the way, in that house, the tenants often died of natural causes as well as without them. Damn. The apartment above mine was once inhabited by a merry family, an elderly aunt, her drug, addicted daughter, who set up a hell of a den in the apartment, and her young child. One day, the aunt was stabbed to death by one of her daughter's friends. And after that, the young woman got into all sorts of mischief. And then the child died of unknown causes. And she herself died, quite naturally, sometime later. I had a pretty good cold once. Damn. High fever, breaking down, delirious sleep. And in this delirium, I heard a sound coming from the empty upper apartment that sounded like a sad baby crying. Since I was aware of the whole story that had happened in that apartment, it occurred to my inadequately thinking head that it was a child crying there. Okay. And I thought of nothing better than to call the poor guy to me, saying, you are alone there, and I am alone here. You are lonely and bad there. I am not better here. Come down. We'll get along somehow. Strangely enough, the sound stopped almost immediately, and after a few minutes, I fell into a deep sleep. The next day, when I woke up, I felt much better. My fever had gone down, and the only thing that reminded me of the disease was a sore throat. If you are waiting for me to start telling you how my apartment since then began to hear baby steps, Your apartment spontaneous began to hear movement of objects and so on, you have not guessed. Nothing really happened. What? Except that from that day on, my life went downhill. Suffice it to say that I almost lost my arms and legs, spent some time in a madhouse, and a lot of other unpleasant things happened. Of course, I do not deny that all this story can be sucked out of a finger and multiplied by my then poor health, and I rolled my life myself. But there is one This is but. weird. Life began to level off right after I moved back to my parents' house, as if some curse had disappeared. All the bad luck was gone at once. Do you believe Why in cursed I, places? I remember. Do you believe in curses? Comment below. They're kind of different from ghost spirits. All this. Just the other day, I spent the whole night studying notes, drinking well-brewed coffee, and in the morning, I decided to take a nap for an hour before work. And you may not believe me, but in that half-sleep under a hoarse dose of caffeine from the upstairs apartment that a good friend of my parents sold not too long ago, and which is temporarily vacant... Wow, that, that sentence hurt. Sad baby cry. I, just don't. I didn't call anyone. To hell with it. I didn't tell anyone. To hell with him. But I'm thinking of making inquiries. Maybe a child died in that apartment, too. By the way, I remembered another detail. 
In the very bad house in the apartment opposite mine once lived a young family, but it so happened that the wife began to walk on the left, and the husband with grief hanged himself in the bathroom. Coincidentally, walk on the, the left. next tenants of that apartment were a couple in which the husband was the namesake of the hanged man. Pretty soon, the wife started to go out, and the couple broke up. The man started drinking. The heavily, wife started to go but he wasn't out. Gonna hang himself. Yeah, this is written by North Sometimes Korean AI, man. Sometimes he told me that in the evening he drank himself bad. into oblivion, and in the morning, for some reason, he woke up lying in an empty bathtub with a torn clothesline. With a torn clothesline? What? What the fuck was that? I am your boy Tony Bug, the boy Zombie Slayer, man. The internet is full of surprises. Till next time. Ah. <laughs>